Um, We are in a uh, seven-week sermon series on the life of Joseph. Faith in difficult times. And that's been the sermon series uh, heading the whole time. And we really see that today. We're in Genesis chapter 41, entitled Pharaoh's Dream. Very interesting. Last week, Brother Tony delivered a wonderful message uh, and uh, left Joseph in prison. (laughs) So here we are today. If you want the message notes, they are online. If you have a, a smartphone, there's an app that looks like what's there on the phone. Ooh, or that too. Looks like the Holy Bible. You can download that, take a picture of the screen, and you can follow along with the sermon notes. It's pretty cool. So I'm already parched. Beware. <laughs> so today's passage is, is long. It's rather long. It's the entire chapter of 41, Genesis. But it really displays Joseph's faithfulness. In so many different ways, as I studied it all week, just new things and new ways he demonstrated his faith popped up. So um, pay attention because it's awesome and it's going to teach you a great lesson about how to stay faithful uh, in difficult times. So let's recap. The story of Joseph is so wonderful and I want to catch you up if you have not been here. We're talking about Joseph. The great-grandson of Abraham, the father of our faith. He is the son of Jacob, also known as Israel. Uh, He's a dreamer, a dreamer prophet, just like his forefathers. He was very handsome, charismatic, and his brothers hated him because of it. Hated him because he was daddy's favorite So they sold him into slavery. They were going to kill him, but they sold him into slavery in Egypt. And he stayed faithful to God. And he rose to become a trusted servant of the captain of the guard, only to be falsely accused by his wife, thrown in prison. And while he was there, he interpreted a dream for the cupbearer and the baker to Pharaoh The cupbearer's interpretation was better than the bread baker, I can tell you. (laughs) And he asked the cupbearer to put in a good word for him. But the cup, but the uh, cup baker, cup bearer, forgot. He forgot. So, Genesis chapter forty-one, verse one. When two full years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing by the Nile. When out of the river there came up seven cows, sleek and fat, and they grazed among the reeds. After them, seven other cows, ugly and gaunt, came up out of the Nile. Um, Sorry, I lost my place. And they uh, came up out of the Nile and stood beside those on the riverbank. And the cows that were ugly and gaunt ate up the seven sleek, fat cows. Then Pharaoh woke up. He fell asleep again and had a second dream. Seven heads of grain, healthy and good, were growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads of grain sprouted, thin and scorched by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven healthy full heads. Then Pharaoh woke up. It had been a dream. In the morning, his mind was troubled, so he sent for all the magicians and wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but no one could interpret them for him. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, today I am reminded of my shortcomings. About time, right? (laughs) Pharaoh was once again angry with his servants, and he imprisoned me and the chief baker in the house of the captain of the guard. Each of us had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. Now a young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. We told him our dreams, and he interpreted them for us, giving each man the interpretation of his dream. And things turned out exactly as he had interpreted them to us. I was restored to my position, and the other man was impaled. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. When he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. So, shaved and changed his clothes. Hebrews were filthy to Egyptians. So the fact that he's even in the presence of Pharaoh is something special. Um... 
So here we are. The cupbearer forgot Joseph for two years. Two years. That's a long time to suffer. And I know, like I said in the, well, in the altar call, many of you are suffering now. You may not be in a physical prison, but you feel like you're in prison. And I wish I could say different, but God doesn't always deliver on demand. You know, you read the story and you romanticize it. Oh, Joseph was in prison. God delivered him. Most extra biblical manuscripts say he was in prison 12 years in chains. Psalm 105 talks about his ankles and his wrists being bruised. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. Your moment is coming. Because the word promises that God looks to the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. And it's the good in his eyes. It may not be the good we think. Stay faithful. I'm not sure Joseph ever thought in a million years when he was going to find his brothers in Shechem and please his father that he'd end up in an Egyptian prison. Stay faithful. If you're suffering and you're praying for deliverance, hold on. The word says to keep on praying. It's not a one and done mentality. The good news is that prayers do not have an expiration date. Nor do they have a limit. God hears and answers in his time. So, Pharaoh had these dreams, and they're bizarre, right? Like the cows, and the healthy cows get eaten by the gaunt cows, and the grain. Very interesting. Bizarre. And connected as well. And his people are stumped. Imagine that. Wonder why. God had this planned all along. And if it's of God, he's going to use it his way. And he's going to show to Pharaoh what the real power of God is. His people are stumped. I love that. So in comes Joseph. In God's timing, after 12 years of suffering, maybe God had a lesson for Joseph in prison. You know, he was a little bit prideful, and I don't know. We don't know. But I know God doesn't waste anything. The hard times, he doesn't waste them. Every time I find myself going toe-to-toe with the enemy and not involving God and going down a wrong path, when I look back, even that wasn't wasted. As long as you have breath, you're not too far gone. God's primary aim for our life is to conform us to Christ, not to make us comfortable. If this world was meant to be sunshine and roses, we wouldn't need the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is called the great comforter. Why would you need a great comforter if there's going to be discomfort or not going to be discomfort? Hold on. Stay faithful. Press in. We've got to grind it out in our faithfulness. It's work. Verse 15, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream and no one can interpret it, but I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh. 
but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Wow. I, I just put myself in that situation. The most powerful man on earth, Pharaoh, has a dream that troubles him. His people can't answer it. His last resort is this filthy Hebrew that he had put in jail. And he says, hey, man, I hear you can interpret a dream. Oh, I can't do it. My God can. <laughs> wow. Joseph, talk about staying faithful. Joseph had an opportunity to take all the credit. He was in a great position, right? But he gave it all to God. That's bold. He could have schemed. He could have been selfish. How can I play this to please Pharaoh and make the most for me? No, oh, he just gave God all the credit. What do we do in similar situations? When you're noticed, when you're confided in, when you finally get that attaboy, do we act in pride or in humility? Do we give our opinion or do we give God's opinion? One thing I've learned in years of following God, outside of maybe advertising and how to act like an idiot, I don't trust my opinion. I want God's opinion. <laughs> I want God's opinion. When we're in that situation, do we look to our needs or to the needs of others? So in verses 17 through 24, Pharaoh kind of repeats his dream, and he says he told the mag magicians, and they couldn't explain. Again, love that part. So we go on to verse 25. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he's about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads of grain are seven years. It is one and the same dream. The seven lean ugly cows that came up afterward are seven years, and so are the seven worthless heads of grain scorched by the east wind. They are seven years of famine. It is just as I said to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt. But seven years of famine will follow them. Then all the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten and the famine will ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that follows it will be so severe. The reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God. And God will do it soon. Wow, okay. So God interprets the, the dream through Joseph. Abundance followed by severe famine. And the dream was given in two forms. Double. Firmly established. What if Pharaoh rejected the interpretation? He could have, right? Here's this Hebrew. What's he know? Another reason God works he works it. He controls it all. He controls it all. He gave Pharaoh the dream. God gave Pharaoh a prophecy. He couldn't interpret it. Do we reject God's leading? Pharaoh listened. What do we do when it's plain in front of us? When something happens over and over, more than twice, going back to patterns that lead to ruin, right? The definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. I was really good at that with alcohol <laughs> and other things that just were difficult to defeat on my own. Couldn't do it on my own. And there's a myriad of other things we all struggle with, prisons that we're in. Why do we go back to those prisons? Folks, you cannot defeat the demons you enjoy playing with. Let me repeat that slowly. You cannot defeat the demons you enjoy playing with. 
you're playing with fire. It catches up. Verse 33. And now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. They should collect all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh to be kept in the cities for food. This food should be held in reserve for the country to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt so that the country may not be ruined by the famine. And it goes on. And Pharaoh is all on board. And he appoints Joseph in charge. How about that? Goes from interpreting this dream to Joseph's in charge. Pharaoh said, since God has made all this known to you, there's no one so discerning and wise as you. And he put Joseph in charge of his palace and made all the people submit to Joseph. Only with respect to the throne would Pharaoh be greater than Joseph. He took his signet ring from his finger, put it on Joseph, dressed him in robes of fine linen, put a gold chain around his neck, and had him ride in his chariot as second in command. People shouted before him, make way. There's a deliverance. And if you don't think Jesus can deliver you just as magnificently, think again. Pharaoh gave Joseph the name Zaphonath Paneah and gave him the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, to be his wife. (laughs) So Joseph not only interprets via God, but he goes the extra mile. He could have just, all he needed to do was interpret the dream, right? Then he goes the extra mile and says, here's what you need to do. Now, Pharaoh's a smart man. He probably, if he bought into what Joseph was selling, he probably would have figured that out eventually. I think he had guys smart enough. There's going to be a famine in seven years. We better store up. It's not like it's this divine revelation, but it was in that moment, and Joseph took advantage of it. He went the extra mile. He did his job. He interpreted the dream. He told Pharaoh what's going to happen. He could have left it at that and still probably been a hero. But he saw an opportunity. And he wasn't just looking out for him. He was looking out for others. Why? We'll learn more next week of the ramifications of that famine and how wide reaching they were and how what comes around goes around. Because guess who's going to be hungry and needing food real soon? That same band of brothers that sold him into slavery is going to come knocking. And who's the man that's got all the food? Go the extra mile. I was praying on this today and God gave me this verse. It's in Proverbs or Psalms somewhere. It says, look to the ant, you sluggard. And how the ant works and prepares. I talked about grinding out in your faith. And I don't want to sound like an old baby boomer, but I think people lost the, what it means to grind these days and what it means to work hard as unto the Lord and not unto man. What it means to work for the common good and not just for yourself. Here's some prophecy for you. The government's giving out money like candy. And all that money comes from taxpayers and workers. Pretty soon it runs out. And there's great opportunity. They're paying way more wages everywhere. What do you do when times are hard? You store up. You plan ahead. Good insurance against tough times that are coming is grinding it out and storing up and working hard for the common good. This isn't a new concept, working hard as unto God and not unto man and looking out for the good of others. And Joseph's deferring to God made it clear to Pharaoh that God's spirit was with him. Pharaoh said that himself. Is it clear to others who controls our life? Is that clear? 
do people have to guess if you're a Christian? Are you one person in church and one person at work? I was. I get it. It doesn't work out well. There's great opportunity if that's you. There's opportunity. God uses Joseph's faithfulness to once again elevate him from prison chains to gold chains. Hold on. Stay faithful. Many of us never get what God has planned because they don't trust him with big, scary dreams. God's dreams are, and plans for us are always bigger than what we can do on our own. Always. That should make you smile. Because he's with you every step of the way, if you let him be. So Joseph gets this new name, Zaphonath Paneah. And it roughly means the God speaks and he lives. This is Pharaoh's name that he gave him. The God speaks and he lives. The living God, even Pharaoh recognized it. Joseph, uh, Pharaoh had said that Joseph had the spirit of God within him. It's clear. When you are walking in step with the Holy Spirit and walking in step with Jesus and walking in step with God, it shines through. People see it. God blesses it. You may go through some prisons and some trials, but stay faithful. Verse 46, Joseph was 30 when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He traveled throughout Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, Joseph collected all the food and stored it in the cities. He stored up huge quantities of grain, like the sand of the sea, so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. Before the years of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph. He named his firstborn Manasseh and said, It is because, because God has made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. The second son he named Ephraim and said, It is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. So we see Joseph continuing to work hard as unto the Lord, not as unto man. Doing what he promised Pharaoh. Again, our faithfulness shows in our actions. You can talk a big game all day long. That's why the word says faith without works is dead. And he has two sons. Manasseh and Ephraim, who would become namesake tribes of Israel. There's not a tribe of Joseph. He got two half-tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. A double blessing. And in the names of his sons, we see Joseph's faithfulness. Giving God glory. Their names had a meaning because God has made me forget all my trouble in my father's household. Because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. He could have been mad in prison for 12 years, couldn't he? Like he could have been like, he could have disowned God. And I know some of us get pressed on so hard, that's tempting. God, where are you? Stay faithful. Joseph knew that we're only stewards of everything here. God's the owner. He gets the glory. We're going to close this out. Verse 53. The seven years of abundance came to an end. Seven years of famine began. Just as Joseph said, there was famine in all the other lands, but in the whole land of Egypt there was food. When all Egypt began to feel the famine, the people cried to Pharaoh for food. Then Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, go to Joseph. And do what he tells you. When the famine had spread all over the country, Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians, for the famine was severe throughout Egypt. And all the world 
came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph because the famine was severe everywhere. Talk about a turn of events. Joseph went from prison to Pharaoh's go-to guy. He literally became the second most powerful man in the world. Hold on, stay faithful. The whole world came to buy grain from Joseph. The whole world needs Jesus so badly and we have him. The whole world is searching. They don't even know what they're searching for. But if they don't see the difference in us, they're going to look elsewhere. And they might not likely turn back because of the example they saw. Don't be that. Be faithful. Be faithful in your prison. The whole world came to buy grain from Joseph. And soon it would be his family. If you follow God wholeheartedly and glorify him above all, you don't go, have to go looking for your plan or your destiny or whatever you want to call it. He brings it to you. Like you stay with him, he carries you where you need to go. You don't need to go seeking for his plan. What's your plan for me, God? Love me, glorify me, help others. And while you're doing that, it unfolds. Consider the sparrows. They don't worry. You don't have to go searching. He'll bring it to you in ways that will help others while further glorifying and establishing him as Lord. Joseph suffered, but he stayed faithful, and his chains were broken. And he was delivered. God's plans for us are bigger than we can ever do on our own. Don't be afraid. If God is for us, who can be against us? Joseph suffered and stayed faithful, and his chains were broken. Jesus suffered and died. On Calvary's cross for you. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. He stayed faithful. He had one moment of weakness. Oh, Father, if you can take this cup from me. But if not, he stayed faithful. And he breaks chains today and every day. If you're sitting out there in the sound of my voice and you feel like you're in prison, financially, spiritually, all of the above, Jesus is a chain breaker. Seek him with all your heart. Start today. We're going to pray. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you feel that tug of the Holy Spirit on your heart saying, the plan's here. The plan's here. Step into it. Come seek me out. There's people right back in this room who will pray with you. You can walk right through that door and take a right. Everybody's head's going to be bowed. You can commit. You can recommit. You can ask for prayer, whatever. Step out in faith and hold on. Let's pray. God, you are so, so good. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you break chains, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for deliverance. You are our deliverance, God. Father, I thank you for what you're doing right now, Lord. Through the worship and through the word that's gone out today, Lord, I know that your Holy Spirit is working in lives, that your healing hand is touching people, that your comfort is just distributing your perfect peace, Lord. You are peace. Jesus is peace. Jesus, peace is not the absence of something. Press into Jesus. Lord, I pray for those who couldn't be here today. I pray for all the sickness in the world. I thank you that COVID is going away. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, use us. Help us to be more like you each day. 
and give you glory with everything. To stay faithful no matter what it looks like, Lord. Help us to stay faithful in Jesus' name. Amen.